What did I do wrong? It does suck to get rejected from your UX internships or full-time job. In my previous video, I covered six reasons why and hope that gives you enough clarity on what might be out of your control. Which means there are some things that you could take control of and change the success rate of your application. However, again, if you look at this email, it tells you absolutely nothing about why you get rejected. So even if you are a really eager to learn self-starter designer, you can't really iterate yourself. And that sucks more for me. Therefore, in this video, I'm gonna uncover four more reasons that you might get rejected for a UX job application and what you can do to turn this around and land your dream job. I will first go over those four reasons backed by real examples and experiences as an interviewee and interviewer in Silicon Valley. Then I'll provide a few links and pointers for you so you can learn something new, iterate on yourself as a designer and get the first round of UX interview. If all those sound exciting, grab your favorite drink and let's get into it y'all. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. There are four corporates, I would say, that could make the hiring manager or recruiter just pass on your portfolio. They might not reflect what you can actually do as a designer, but just based on what they see, it might not align with what they're after. And that is the issue. And I will go over them one by one. And the first one, elephant in the room, is sucky visuals. This is especially important for junior designers, new grads, interns, they have some impact on senior roles as well. And I have explicitly talked about that in this video about what junior designers should pay attention to. So something to watch out for in your portfolio is alignment, misalignment, some weird color combination that makes your eyes hurt and jump everywhere else. Or it doesn't look professional enough, it looks amateur. It looks like people who have not gone through design school or proper design education. Your interaction and processes can make it up but that's not the case for many tech companies if you want to work in Silicon Valley, of course. I always mention there's a minimum bar that you have to pass, which I mentioned in another video before. And the visual part is something that you really have to be honest with yourself about. Even I can say my visual is not the best because I have seen better work. So I'm constantly learning and trying to improve my visual design over time. Next is too much text. I break this apart from visual design because I've seen candidates they're okay with visual design, their layouts are pretty decent, their processes, their diagrams are clear, no alignment issues, no major color weird combination things, nothing funny going on there. It's just this overwhelming amount of text. It looks more like a blog post than a portfolio. So when we interview for interns, if we see things like that, we will be like, seems okay, but we just let's just take a look at it if other ones are better. And of course, there will be other portfolios with less text, more organized, sharper, then we just forgot about the decent looking layout, bunch of text candidate. It's good to have thorough process, you have to have that, but whether you present that is a different question. So double check whether your portfolio looks like a block or a portfolio. Another interesting point, just to wrap this one up, is if you think about a movie that you watch, not a lot of text in a movie, because movie is supposed to be visual. You will see a lot of facial expression, different angle, camera work, zooming, dolly zoom, pan, but not an overwhelming amount of conversation. There'll be a few words and they don't talk really fast. It's slow, it's controlled, it's paced. So think about that when you're constructing your portfolio, when you decide to have text to implement to it. Next is the nature of the projects, especially the shallow ones. If your portfolio is filled with small projects, then likely they will pass on you. Those small projects can be like two weeks exploration on redesigning some, some company's app, a three-day hackathon project, a small design feature optimization. These projects are great in the sense that they demonstrate you have the drive, you have the passion, you want to do more, you're excited about design. That's great, we want to see that in candidates. I do those from time to time as well. I encourage you to do more. But here's the thing that we need to get straight here. These projects are never the main course in the meal. They're just appetizers and desserts. They are great, they complete the meal, but they're not the meal. This is not a tapas either. This is not dim sum. You cannot have many small things to put together and turn into a whole meal. It's not, that's not how it works. That's not what companies are looking for. So just be aware. There is a simple reason why these small projects are not giving you advantage 
are not doing you good, are setting you back. And the reason is hiring managers are not looking for appetizers. That should be pretty clear. They're looking for people with skills and experiences in doing big projects, large scope projects, six weeks, 10 weeks, three month long projects, because there are a lot of moving parts in the real world. Project planning, engineering, scoping, aligning to business metrics and company goals, checking with PM, and reaching out to experts, discovery, research with UXR, going through five design iterations, prototype concept, validation with UXR. The list goes on and on. That's why big projects take time. That's why only small projects will not work well for you because it's not possible to do all those in two weeks, in three days, and hence they lack scope and depth. The scope and depth are what the hiring managers need. And turn your designer brain on, use design thinking. To get hired, you need to fulfill their need. So give them, show them scope and depth. Last one, ineffective presentation. This is really about the overall look and feel of your portfolio because that's the presentation of your work. How do you put your projects together? How do they sequence? What goes after what? How big are the images? How wide are they? How tall are they? Where would the text go? It directly formed their first impression of, and you only have one chance to make your first impression. This is just like marketing. If you are a company, your design projects are the product, your portfolios, landing page, color, usage, accent, topography, layout, project thumbnails, etc., will be the marketing of you. You really shouldn't have really good looking projects but a support website to host all those beautiful projects. University Apple has great products, but ugly ads, right? That doesn't make any sense. Same thing here, be consistent. And whenever we talk about forms, we also have to talk about function. If your portfolio website is too hard to navigate between projects, between page, homepage, you are actually showing that there are UX issues literally at your own marketing. Then when the hiring manager sees it, it's likely they're gonna skip it. So those are the four areas you totally have control of. And if you fix them, they can really elevate your application. And how to fix it? Here's the next part, the solutions. And let's go over the visual part first. And I think the first thing is that we need a mindset change. You have to prepare it mentally. You have to accept that your visual design is not good enough. And it's okay because it takes some time for people to get good at something. And before you get good at it, of course, your current visual is not going to be the best. I, for example, very transparent, I noticed my visual design sucked in my sophomore year in college. I knew that, I accept that, no shame, no embarrassment, I just know who I am, I want to iterate on myself. So I took the Parsons Graphic Design Summer course in New York. I spent a summer there, level up drastically my graphic design skills. And it paid off really well. And I think we need to also accept the fact that it could take us a lot of time to learn, to relearn, do and redo our portfolio, resume. Sometimes it's a project-wide overhaul. It's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. This happened to me too. I finished my project in school, right? The six week program. I thought I was done, but then I looked at it again. I was like, ah, this visual design kind of suck. So I spent another week and a half out of my own winter break to get it to a more decent place. And it went okay. I got my internship at Pinterest and Waymo. Once you have the mindset, then it gets pretty interesting because now you're way more receptive to new ideas. And then you just open your door to many more opportunities. For example, you ask experts in the field to critique on your own portfolio visually. Ask for actionable feedback of what areas to work on. Is it color? Is it layout? You compare your work to world-class visual design, world-class portfolio design, visual design, project design work. While adjusting your mindset, doing more practice, overhaul might take some time, here's what you can do right after this video. I made a video before about choosing the right color in UI design, so feel free to check that one out because I went through the color theory, how that works in real-life practice in UI design, not just the conventional one. I also made another video on the best UI tips you can use to up your portfolio, up your UI design to another level. And you can also immerse yourself into great visual design to just get yourself in that environment so you can absorb and learn subconsciously. And I also made another video on it to introduce you to five different sources that you can find nice design. So check that out as well. All the links I talked about will be in the description box down below. To tackle the next problem, 
too much text. This is actually a lot easier and lower bar because you can wordsmith your own project right now. You can always try this method. Just have no text at all, only use images. Then tell me, show me, demo it. How would you structure your portfolio differently? Another thing to try is cut your text in half. Rephrase everything so that it fits the narrative. How will you adjust the text? You can also try to learn from the best. Look at how Apple present their products on Apple.com. Look at how Airbnb present their products on their releases. There's not that much text. My older portfolio when I was an intern, new grad, it actually has quite a lot of text if you really do the word count. But my visuals are heavier. In terms of ratio, it doesn't seem like it has more text. So feel free to experiment that as well. Image to text ratio. If you're looking for real examples or case study of how to cut down text, I actually made two videos on it. Feel free to check them out. Link in here and also description down below. To tackle the next one, shallow projects. If I were to summarize a list of things that make a solid, thorough, deep project, it would be something like, it should be at least six weeks, eight weeks, three months long. You have proper project planning. To identify the problem, you validated the problem, there will be engineering scoping, alignment to business metrics, goals, there will be check-in, there will be reaching out to experts, you explore different directions, different fidelities of mock-ups and prototypes, you discover, you did discovery research, you go through five design iterations, you have prototyping, you have testing, you have validation, you have the back and forth. One thing you can do is to start your own project and hit those spots. If you don't have a PM to work with, find your PM friend, talk to them, let them be the PM for your project. If you don't have an engineer to work with you, you have engineering friends, right? Just let them be the engineer. Ask them hypothetically, if they were to implement it, what would they be considering? So that you have a context of it, so you can have a conversation with it. Or you can revamp an existing project. The workload can be less. And as you know, design never ends. You can always keep working on your favorite projects and that's totally valid. But just compare what you have done to that list and fill in the gap. You can also do freelance work with a real clients that tend to give you more exposure to cross-functional collaborations. But make sure you're looking for product design freelance work. And the last one to tackle the ineffective presentation. First, show it to your designer friend, preferably those who have not seen portfolio yet. Real example, I showed my presentation to a friend of mine from Pinterest. I got some feedback, I iterated on it, and I got a full-time offer from DoorDash. Check the number of scrolls you have. Five is a good number to cover. New grads could be a little bit more because you have to show your thorough process. The more senior, the less you need to present technically. I make sure to use very sharp, very high quality, high fidelity visual images to form your narrative and tell the story. This also relates to the sucky visual point I made and excessive text. Those affect your presentation as well, so just be careful and use text only to give necessary context. For example, this is a problem that you're going to solve. If you can show that problem in a visual way, even better, take that challenge and be better than me. Or don't add any text to describe the content of the image if the image is doing its job already. And the image should so why do we need that caption? You get a point, and the presentation of the portfolio is totally within your control. Pick a different template, pick a different layout, use Squarespace or WordPress, predetermined website, really nice structured layout, take care of all the navigation, you have control. If you were to build your own, just make sure your customization is not that crazy. That's quite a long list of things to do and take notes of, right? I know, I understand, I was there, I have been there, it's just part of the process. You just have to go through that journey and you don't have to get discouraged, demotivated, frustrated, and instead try to learn, have fun in the process because you like design, you enjoy doing design work, just have fun tackling the problem, feeling the joy of doing a really amazing, thorough, in-depth project. And you will be very satisfied and proud in the end. So stick to that feeling. All the links I mentioned will be in the description box down below. Some of them will be right here. So check them out. Like and subscribe to support this channel and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Tschüss.